So uh, let's talk O.J. Simpson. Um, hmm. So what they showed last night with the jury uh, being very upset was accurate, and to me, it was the most interesting part of this show uh, because, you know, a lot of what happened with the lawyers and with O.J., you know, we know. I mean, certainly having covered it, I know most of that stuff. And, I, and some of it was not true, but some of it was true. But none of it was really eye-opening for me. But the jury was really interesting because you have to think about it. Nobody ever thought about the jurors' perspective of all of this. And they showed something that people don't really think about, which is sequestering a jury, which basically means taking them out of their living situation, putting them in a hotel room where they don't have a television set, where they're monitored, where they can't interact the way they interact with people, where they can't talk, you know, they can't go in somebody else's room and talk, where they have to be followed to the swimming pool. And that's a tough thing to do for a week. Think about doing that for nine months, especially when they said the trial at the beginning would probably last two to three months. So this jury, nine months in, revolted. What they talked about when they all walked in wearing black, it actually happened. Um, and they had a revolt on their hands. There was almost a mistrial in this case because jurors were dropping like flies. And what they showed was accurate. It was really interesting and really well done. I thought that was the best part of the show in terms of showing something that was not really known uh, to many people. And I will say, as a reporter who covered the case, we really didn't think too much about what it was like for the jury to be cooped up that way. Uh, but I think they showed something really interesting. In addition, uh, to, you know, they, they, they also showed the opportunism on juries now where people automatically think about writing a book, keeping notes. Um, that was really, really interesting and really, really accurate. Whoever did that show, whoever wrote that show, had done a lot of research, and I'm guessing they spoke to jurors in this case because they really got it down. So to me, that was great. The other thing I thought was really interesting was Robert Kardashian. Um, and they showed something that I think was real based on what I know and knowing him, uh, to show the turn. Robert Kardashian believed that O.J. Simpson was guilty by the end. He knew he was guilty. And um, you saw that turn where he didn't want to believe it, and then all of a sudden he started hearing about the DNA evidence and the probability that it's one in 70 million that that blood uh, would be anybody else's other than O.J. Simpson's. And that was a turning point in the trial for him. And of course, the iconic moment uh, for the trial, as far as I'm concerned, was when O.J. Simpson was found not guilty and you look at Robert Kardashian's face and it's abs absolute shock and horror. And you know, by the time it was over, he knew O.J. did it. Final thing I will say is this. I think one thing the show is doing poorly is they are creating legitimate, reasonable doubt the way it's being presented. That when you watch the show, I think you say to yourself, now I get why the jury found O.J. Simpson not guilty. I think that, that pisses me off. It pisses me off because it's not true and I watched the whole thing and so did the jurors. And yes, moments did happen. There was a guy in the stand, the criminalist, Dennis Fung, who was torn apart by Barry Sheck. That was absolutely true. And he, I, I'm almost positive he actually did shake O.J.'s hand. He was, it was a bonehead move. But, and there were some terrible things that the prosecution did in this case and that the police had done in terms of sloppy investigative work. But through it all, when you watch the whole trial, it leaves no doubt that O.J. Simpson did it. That with all of the foibles of the prosecution, and with all of the missteps of the LAPD, when this case went to the jury, there was no doubt that OJ did it, and also little doubt that they weren't gonna be poisoned by Mark Furman and what he had said using the N-word and all the other stuff. But they are making it look on this show like there was reasonable doubt, and that it is reasonable to believe there was reasonable doubt, and that simply is not true.